Women, as we all know, are so attached to their hair. When they lose it, it's just like losing their limb. Take for instance this lady who's from a French coastal Mediterranean town. She had been saving all her hair for one year to just come and show to me and complain to me about the hair loss that she's suffering from before her hair transplant. Now this is the effect, this is the psychological impact hair loss has on both men and women but more so in women who are so used to their lush hair that when it begins to thin it affects them psychologically. If you go by plain statistics for example in my clinic out of every 100 people that we operate upon for hair transplant, only 2.5 will be women. Now there's a reason why less women go for hair transplant and I'll explain to you these reasons later down the line in this video. Though in males, preponderant cause for hair loss is androgenetic alopecia. In women, the uh, causes are wide and varied and they can be genetic like in men which is quite common or hormonal like at the time of childbirth and in premenopausal state certain medical conditions can lead to hair loss like anemia like hypothyroidism and polycystic ovarian disease there are other a host of other diseases which due to shortage of time we will not be covering exposure to radiation and anti-cancer drugs is also a common cause in women in later age the impact of stress on your hair is not something that you should understate it is a very important part of hair loss in women who are prone to balding if the component of stress is added the hair loss is much much more than it otherwise would have been and lastly do not underestimate the effect of the natural aging process on your hair. Losing up to 90 hair per day is absolutely normal because 90 hair per day also grow back. But if there is a disconnect between the number of hair that are being lost and the number of hair which are regrowing, that is lesser number, then there is something to worry. And that is when most women complain of loss of volume and skin showing through the hair. That is when most of them come seeking expert advice. Now losing hair is very normal. Why? Because the hair is a living tissue and hair has a natural cycle. The anagen phase is the hair growth phase when you can see it in full bloom on your head. Now when it goes into the resting stage, it is called the catagen phase. And finally the telogen phase or the phase of shedding when the hair is in a dormant state. So most of the treatments that we have, they play with the hair cycle to increase the period of anagen and to decrease the period of telogen, thereby giving you more hair on your head at any given time. There is a distinct difference between commonly seen patterns in women hair loss and those in men. In women the hair loss is global. The thinning is diffuse. It is not limited to a particular part that is the top vertex hairline like in men. In men in most of the cases the sides and the back of the head is spared and since these areas have normal hair condition they are eligible for hair transplant. In women the entire area is affected. Even the back of the head and the sides of the head are affected. So this is the essential difference between female hair loss pattern and male hair loss pattern. In young women, the hair is lush and it is longer and thicker as we all know. The density is high, the length is long and the hair shaft diameter is thicker than in later age. Because when you are young, the anagen phase is longer, it is prolonged. As you age, in the natural course of gaining age, your anagen phase becomes shorter and shorter. And this is why the volume of hair will thin, the shaft diameter will be lesser because the shaft has less time to grow and the length of hair will become shorter. Many females usually do not take kindly to this. During uh, pregnancy, the good hormones play up. These hormones prolong the period of anagen phase and therefore you will see a pregnant woman looks much brighter and looks more youthful and healthy than she did before or she will after the pregnancy is over. However, the moment the child is born, this effect is reversed. Many a times it so happens that a lady comes to us with sudden hair loss and to confuse it with genetic hair loss is a red herring. Many a times it is mere telogen effluvium due to certain event in their life or certain drugs or other extraneous factors, the follicles are suddenly pushed into the telogen phase and it takes a while, up to three to four months for the hair to start suddenly shedding. This gap of three to four months is the time taken for the hair to become thin, weak and fall off. So not to confuse with genetic hair loss, this is an important entity to note and to treat accordingly. The good news here in telogen effluvium is that most of this hair loss is reversible if treated adequately. And properly. So many of the hair treatments that are bandied around by hair salons and other beauty clinics and beauty treatment centers are always not beneficial to your hair. Take for example the Brazilian blowout or the keratin treatment. It is well known that all these treatments contain a compound called formaldehyde. Now this formaldehyde is not good for the bonds 
in your hair. It weakens the bonds, though it is being marketed as a treatment which strengthens the bond, but it is the other way around. Formaldehyde also is a, is a cancerous compound. Please abstain from treatments like rollers, curling, straightening of hair with hot irons, hot oil treatments, and even bleaching. If you're coloring your hair, be careful that you'd get a deep conditioning before the hair color is applied. Why? Because these are all chemicals and when they get absorbed, they weaken the structure of your hair and the hair will become brittle. So it is always better to coat the hair with deep conditioning before applying a hair coloring dye. Yes, women routinely benefit from hair loss treatments. However, every treatment has to be tempered and tweaked to suit a particular condition, suit a particular person. And this can be determined only by a doctor who's qualified in treating hair loss problems. Every treatment does not suit everyone like it is marketed, like Rogaine. Rogaine is not going to treat every hair loss in every woman. You have to combine it with certain other additives or certain other adjunctive treatments before it will work. It might work in isolation in some patients, but usually it does not work in isolation. Now, what treatments will be beneficial to you will be decided on your response to that treatment and your doctor has to follow up and see the response of the medicines that, that are being tried on you. No treatment is 100% foolproof. There's a wide variation of response, patient response to drugs in female pattern hair loss. This you have to know. It takes up to three months for any medicine to have an effect on your hair regrowth. Why? Because that is the time taken by the root to grow a new hair and by the time the old hair becomes weak and falls off and the new hair grows, there's a period of three to four months by which time you'll start noticing the, the benefits of the medicines that you're taking. So if you've continued for two months, please stay on board and you will very soon experience a satisfactory result due to this medication. You can visit a qualified medical doctor when your hair loss is such that it is more than the usual 90 strands a day or when when you're taking pictures your front forelock does not appear as dense as it used to be earlier. A very good test I learned from a trichologist based in US. You take about 50 hair strands between your fingers and give it a gentle tug. If up to five hair are dislodged or come into your fingers it means it's normal. Your hair loss is normal you should not be concerned. However, if more than eight or 10 hair strands are in your hand, it's time to visit a doctor. For hypothyroidism, it is essential to maintain your thyroid levels. And you can do these only by taking your medicines regularly, half an hour before your meal. And also every three months or four months, visit a laboratory nearest to you and get your levels checked. This will ensure that hypothyroidism does not continue to have its deleterious effect on your hair. PRP has been in vogue for a long time now and we have aggressive marketing from clinics. PRP is the holy grail of hair loss, which it is not. There is no scientific basis on the use of PRP. However, we have seen, though it is questionable, that PRP in combination with other drugs like finasteride, minoxidil, spironolac has had a good effect and do patients, some patients do have a salubrious effect with the use of PRP when they are losing hair. We have our own lab in which my wife who is a qualified pathologist, does hair loss research and we produce our own PRP, which is produced under stringent norms. We have also been combining PRP with ACL and this we have seen has enhanced the effect of PRP on our clients. There are a host of treatments available today. Treatments come and treatments go, but there are certain treatments which stay. And these treatments have withstood the test of time. And I like to talk only about treatments which have been there in vogue for a long time because we are aware of the likely side effects of such drugs, such medicines, such regimes, and our patients are safe now and in the long term. Now, some of the treatments are minoxidil is the most commonly used hair loss medication in women. It is available in a pink container labeled as Rogaine for women. Many women have a good effect by using it once or twice a day. In some women, it does not work. So in these, you gradually increase it to 5% once a day first, and then twice and see how it responds. The only problem with minoxidil is that it is sticky and it does not allow women to have proper hair styling. The other treatments available are spironolactone or aldactone, which is an anti-androgen medication taken in the dose of 25 milligram a day in consultation and on prescription from your doctor. Then we have finasteride, which is recommended for post-menopausal women. Some regimes include oral minoxidil, though this is to be taken with utmost care because of the side effects, the numerous side effects that it has. When there's a focus of inflammation around the follicle, ketoconazole can be added to the regime. Some doctors also like to recommend corticosteroid injections into the scalp. And then we have hormonal replacement, use of oral contraceptives to play up the good hormones which have an effect on your hair. Nutrition is very important. 
the right amount of iron zinc is important in your body if you are anemic you should take iron supplementation zinc is an essential nutrient for hair high protein diet for vegetarians and non vegetarians is a must for having good quality hair low level laser light is increasingly being used by uh, certain clinics it is fda approved for use in women however how much use it has is not yet certain because there are no reliable papers which have been published to prove that low level laser light therapy is of use in hair loss in women keep changing your hairstyle if you have hair loss or your hair are thin and friable so do not keep one hairstyle keep shifting do not tie tight braids tight ponytails and tight top knots when your hair is thin or when you are losing hair of course also use a wide tooth comb while combing your hair finasteride is not as effective in women as it is in men finasteride is teratogenic so when you are using finasteride you should ensure that you are on oral contraceptives and don't get pregnant when planning a pregnancy make sure you stop using the drug clear 30 days before planning the pregnancy in a recent study using 2.5 mg of finasteride a day in women who were suffering from hair loss it was found that 65% of the women had significant hair regrowth and 35% of women had some growth though it wasn't so much but there was beneficial growth of hair this dosage of 2.5 mg a day is well tolerated in women now increasing this dose to 5 mg which is a question women who have a good effect from finasteride do ask any increase of this medicine above 2.5 mg will not have an effect which is peri passu with this increase why because the dose response curve flattens out after 2.5 mg so therefore stick to 2.5 mg it will give you good effect without giving you the added side effects of 5 mg finasteride this is uh, this is a short form for spironolactone very commonly used short form spironolactone is also called as aldactone it is an anti androgen medicine and it has to be taken under prescription guidance and supervision of a qualified hair loss doctor anti androgens are little risky drugs to take it is increasingly being used in hair loss in women however you have to weigh the side effects and benefits that you will get from spironolactone because the side effects can be far greater than those experienced with finasteride or oral minoxidil in a 1988 study it was found that effects of using 2% nizoral shampoo once a week were similar to using 5% minoxidil as far as increase in the hair shaft diameter and prolonging the androgen phase was concerned a 2004 study also revealed that nizoral can disrupt the dht pathway and therefore it can also be regarded as a weak dht blocker however as i keep harping again and again in all the videos that i make on medication all papers from the pharmaceutical industry for hair loss are to be taken with a pinch of salt what are the benefits of a drug in a particular patient what are the side effects vary from person to person and it is only the patient in communication and on the advice of a competent hair loss doctor who can decide whether this drug will suit her adequately or not many drugs need to be tempered and tweaked and combined with other medications before a good effect is obtained and this is where a good qualified doctor will help you in determining what suits you the most which regime is tailor cut for your hair loss pattern ketoconazole or nizoral is easy to use because it's one time application in a week and you wash it off immediately so there is no problem in applying it additionally if you notice hair fall if you notice dandruff then it is time that you should include nizoral in your hair loss treatment stack because it naturally improves the environment around the hair follicle and gives it a better opportunity to grow so there is no harm absolutely in using 2% ketoconazole or nizoral once a week and on the other 6 days in the week you can use a weak dht blocking shampoo yes of course hair transplant is there for women but the only thing to note is that the hair loss should not be diffuse and the donor area that is at the back and side of the head should be relatively spared there should be healthy follicles in anagen phase that can be harvested and relocated to give the effect that a woman desires to also note here is large areas of female pattern baldness are usually not possible to cover with available grafts because the area is limited also women do not have the added benefit of body hair which can be utilized or recruited in a hair transplant to cover larger areas so essentially hair transplant in most women who have hair loss is a form of camouflage and concealment it is the hairline the frontal forelock area the temples which are most important and with a little bit of change of hairstyle if you pull your hair back on the sideways uh, or from one side to the other shift your parting line many women have a misconception that hair transplant is for everybody that hair transplant will give you a head full of hair well it will not you'll be disappointed 
Why? Because it is your own hair that we take in hair transplant and if the hair are limited, only limited number of grafts can be placed. But if those are placed strategically in the right places, your look will be much better than it otherwise was. You will know, get your hairline back, you will get your temples back and your frontal forelock which is very important when the pictures are taken and you will be happy. And there are other videos that I have made where you can learn what hair transplant can do and what hair transplant cannot do in particular situation. Otherwise, when eligible, women have results after hair transplant comparable to those of men. If this video is in Punjabi or Hindi, please comment on me and we will you Hindi and Punjabi. If you have time, please join us in our YouTube live session and your questions जो भी प्रश्न आप मेरे से करेंगे मैं उनका जवाब देने की कोशिश करूंगा और उस जरिए आपकी जो चिंताएं हैं आपके जो मन में शक है हेयर लॉस के बारे में हेयर ट्रांसप्लांट के बारे में उनको दूर करने की कोशिश करूंगा थैंक यू धन्यवाद ऑल द बेस्ट